You see, these Ravens, they've been doing stuff in the background. Well, actually, it's been in the forefront to prepare for the possible extension of one Lamar Jackson. And let's talk about it. First question came from my guy, Sedarian. He said, hey, Graven, hope you and the fam all well. Hey, we are doing really good. I hope you and your family are doing even better. With the Ravens drafting 10 play, well, it was actually 11 players, and having several roster spots occupied by undrafted free agents, it seems like the Ravens are purposely getting younger. In preparation for Lamar Jackson's contract extension, I honestly can see all of the drafted players making the 53-man roster and some undrafted free agents as well with possible PUPs uh, and IRs. This gives the Ravens a large percentage of players that will be signed to rookie contracts on all three sides of the ball, cushioning whatever Lamar Jackson's future annual cap number will be. What are your thoughts behind this? P.S. I got my David Ajabo prediction right. Uh, hopefully he can play later this season, but I wouldn't mind redshirting him either. So congratulations on calling the Ravens drafting him back in April. Um, but as far as the way that they're building the roster, I mean, they would have had they, they would have been doing all this stuff either way, whether Lamar Jackson's getting paid or not, because they simply needed to retool the roster. And the way that free agency works and the draft and all that, you, I mean. In, in Madden, I do it, but I know real life not isn't always Madden. A lot of times it is, though. But in Madden, if I'm retooling my roster, then f as far as free agents, I'll look for a few different guys where, that are, like, at premier positions. If it's – I'll look for, like, man, an offensive lineman. Um, I may look for uh, an edge guy. I'll look for a, a wide receiver, depending on who it is. I look for a tight end. Well, I, I guess I really just look for anything. Um, cornerback, safety. I look for a lot of stuff, but I can only do so much um, and got to do a lot of reloading through the draft. So even w with Lamar Jackson's contract coming up, yeah, they certainly had to, they got to do a lot better uh, when it comes to not only drafting, but getting impact players from the draft, guys that can come in right away and be difference makers. You, you, you have to have that, uh, especially uh, once you pay your quarterback. I mean, you should be doing it before. Before you even pay the quarterback, you should be doing it. Um, but you should definitely be, be doing it after uh, as well. Um, so, yeah, it, it, is, it is for Lamar Jackson's contract, but it's also just for the team, too, because they had a lot of spots and a lot of holes on this roster that they needed to plug and play. So they did a good job drafting. They still got a little few things that they could fine tune, but they did a good job with the draft. Uh, well, based off of how guys are how good some guys are projected to be. They, of course, we got to see it, and, and no draft is truly gradable until, like, two, three years down the road. So we'll see when we get there. On paper, the draft is good, but now we got to see it on the field. We got to see the impact from guys. We got to see how guys, well, if they are qu truly quality depth uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. And we'll start to see how that works itself out over the next, uh, over the next week. And, and, and over the next couple of weeks in training camp, then in preseason, and then the season will be here, and, and, and then we'll be able to start to evaluate. But the evaluation doesn't just finish after one season for rookies. Now, we hope that these rookies can come in, and it's like, oh, man, oh, they came through. Wow, that was such a good pick. Wow, I'm glad that guy's a Raven. Wow, he made such a big impact. And we know not every single rookie is going to be like that. But... It's very important that, especially from the top down, I mean, obviously a first round pick and second round and all that, uh, you want the guys with the higher draft status to have a higher impact, but you also want guys with low draft status to have a, a higher impact too, as much as they can. You know, a lot of the times the guys that are picked lower, they're going to be getting less playing time, uh, and the, it, a lot depends on the situation, but bottom line, Ravens need more impact from their drafts, more immediate impact from their drafts. Lamar Jackson, once he does get paid, uh, and hopefully is from the Baltimore Ravens. But once Lamar Jackson does get paid, um, yeah, eventually his, his cap number is going to go way up. It's going to take a significant amount of money from the cap, from the salary cap. Now, there are, th that does not excuse the Baltimore Ravens for from providing for Lamar Jackson. 
So I want to make that clear, even though I think we've made that clear already. We've got to continue to make that clear. Just because Lamar Jackson is getting ready to get paid, and again, hopefully it's from the Ravens, but if the Ravens pay Lamar Jackson, this does not excuse or prevent them from supplying him. They should have been supplying him more already, but hey, that's the past, and we're in the present now. You get the point. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Way too early. Next question came from my guy D3. He said, what's happening in Graven and team? Keep it clean. Hope that you and your family are doing well. I have two questions for you. With the pride that the Ravens taking their undefeated preseason records, as of right now, who do you see us signing as an undrafted free agent? Oh, you mean like keeping on the, on the roster? I, I think the answer to this question is actually the title to your question. Way too early. We haven't got to see any of these guys yet on the field in a game. I haven't even got to see a training camp yet. So I, I, I can't even answer that because my first thought went to maybe one of the wide receivers. But we haven't seen him in action yet, so I, I really can't say. Uh, but number two, he said, does the undefeated preseason solidify the fact that EDC has had solid drafts during his tenure as GM? He catches a lot of heat with some for draft picks not panning out while completely ignoring what he has done midseason to improve the team. Oh, I love that question. That's a really good question. Uh, again, thanks for the content, uh, and please keep up the great work. I hey, appreciate you a lot, man. And I do every single comment section. I see my guy, D3. Um, so does the undefeated preseason solidify the fact that EDC has had solid drafts during his tenure? Um, no. I, I don't think it does. Reason I say that is because that's preseason. That's preseason. Um, and you want and need impact in regular season. You want and need impact come playoff time. Um, so you want and need impact when it counts the most. Preseason, their, their preseason record is great. It's, it's fun. It, it keeps us tuning into the preseason. It's fun to think about. Hey, we su we preseason Super Bowl champs every year. Let's get. I don't even remember the last time they lost. I forgot when it was, but it's been years. But that's preseason. It's preseason, and, and guys have got started. It is a nice confidence bo booster for a lot of young guys that are on the squad. But preseason, in my opinion, preseason is not enough. Now, with Eric DaCosta's drafts, he, he can't do everything. He can draft the guys, but it's also important because context is everything. It's also important that, because we talked about it in a previous question, getting high-impact players. But it's important to know that uh, he's not a coach. He's a GM. So his job is to build the roster, construct the roster, make any trades for the roster, personnel decisions for the roster, but he does not play the roster. He's not in control of the scheme. He's not in control of the coaching staff. The coaching staff, they're the ones that got to put these guys in positions to succeed. And a lot of times we've seen it to where guys, they end up leaving or, or not panning out. And, and I use quotations when I say that because – a lot of guys just weren't really given the right opportunity. Guys will have done something great in college and they get to the Ravens and the Ravens are like, oh, you know what? We're not going to have them do what they did great in college. We're going to have them do something completely different. And it's not like that with every single player, but a, a lot of players, it can be that way. Where the Ravens just completely changed who that player was and try to make them something different. And, and it just doesn't pan out. So... Not everything is on EDC. It, it, it take, it's a group effort. It's, it's a collective effort. There are guys, there are some guys where, hey, it's worked out great. Some guys where they've drafted him and it's worked out phenomenal. It's been, oh, let's go, Ravens. Oh, Ravens, great job. Then there's been other guys where it hasn't been so pretty. So it, it, it goes both ways. But it takes everybody 
in order for each player uh, to have success. And of course, the players themselves too. Budget Buster. Next question. Wait, this has been a long time. Next question came from my guy, Enonic. Enonic, what's up, baby? Anyway, he said, hey, Engraver, hope you and the fam are having a great summer. We all. It's really hot down here, but I, I love the heat. Would not trade it for the cold ever. Anyway, he said, I'm sure Carter, haven't met a second Ravens legend in Lamar Jackson. We know you're the GOAT. Not at all. Made th made his day. Oh, yeah, it sure did. He, he, he loved meeting Lamar. And um, hopefully he gets another opportunity to meet him again this week. But we'll see. Anyway, he said, here's my comment slash questions. When Watson signed that massive contract with the Browns, even with so many questions looming about his past actions, I thought it was an outlier. A, a bad business decision by the Browns, but a move in line with the Browns' previous QB history. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. It's still crazy to think about it to this day. But, yeah, it was wild. Anyway, he said, personally, I imagine EDC and Bashadi cringing at the thought of paying Lamar that kind of money. Now, with the Cardinals extension of Kyler Murray, it suddenly makes a $230 million contract extension the new norm. Yes and no, because Deshaun Watson, $230 million contract, $230 million is guaranteed. Kyler Murray's $230.1 million contract, uh, so slightly above... Uh, Deshaun Watson, I think he had, was it 140? 100, no, 160? It was, it was 70 mil less. So 30, 40. So yeah, 160 mil guaranteed. So that was the big difference between those two. But anyway, let's keep going. Um, he said, if the Ravens don't want to break the bank to sign a top number one wide receiver, what makes people think they will break the bank for Lamar Jackson? Ooh, that's a question right there. But um, to answer that question, because they already have Lamar Jackson um, and they they know what he means to this team. Um, and I, as much as he's done for the, the Ravens already, uh, and a lot of the success that he's brought, a lot of the things that he's covered up, the deficiencies that he's covered up for them too, um, all while not, he, he's he's done this all while not even being his best all while not even having reached his full potential yet and i say that because i just really don't believe he's reached his full potential reason being because i don't think they've put him in position to reach his full potential i think they've limited him a lot they've held him back a lot a whole lot and this is nothing new that we've been talking about this from last year too, and, and the year before, it's just, it seems like they like, oh, you know what, Lamar, oh, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. We, we gonna reel you in, all right, calm down, all right, chill out, chill out. But anyway, um, he said uh, his potential contract could end up being twice as much, uh, 240 mil as the 120 mil contract that Flacco signed. Oh, wow, how long, when, when was that? That was... 2013, where he signed that deal. And yeah, now it's 2022. Wow. And QB salaries, yeah, they've doubled. It's taken a little while, though. It's taken about nine years for them to double, but still. Yeah, man. Wow. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate it, like, reflecting on that. He says, so my questions are, well, number one, do you think the Ravens will come up with the money to sign Lamar to a new contract? Oh, that's pretty straightforward. I hope they do. I hope they do. Um, I just, I wonder, I know, because I know a lot of people have said that, oh, yeah, like like you mentioned, the, the Deshaun Watson contract, that's not the new standard. That's not going to be the new norm. But Lamar Jackson could look at that like, hey, hold up, this dude, he hasn't played in a year. So he's been gone. He's been out. He has all these allegations going against him. And whether they're true or not, hey, who knows? Again, only Deshaun Watson and anybody who was involved in whatever, only they would know. But he got all that, all that unknown going on right now. But the Browns still, with that information, they still gave him $230 million guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. Has he won a Super Bowl? No. I think he only won one playoff game too. Now we know when he played, he, he could do some stuff now. 
Deshaun Watson definitely a talented quarterback. That boy can play. Or well, when he did play. But with all that being said, and they still gave him all that money, Lamar Jackson could be looking at that like, hey, what's up? That's, hey, that's what we starting at. That's what we starting at. And it actually needs to be higher, especially because, you know, timing and everything. But that's, that's what we starting at. Y'all want to talk? Hit, hit me with that. I ain't, I ain't got nothing against it. I ain't got no allegations, none of that stuff. I'm team keep it clean. So it, it's like, and I've been here, and y'all, y'all know what life is like with me, but y'all certainly know what it's like without me, too. So you make the decision. Hey, I'm good. I, I got money. I, you, I, I, could, I could play out on this 23.1. This 50 year option. Cool. I'll play out on it. That's fine. But hey, let, when y'all, if y'all ready to talk, like real numbers, hit me up. If y'all coming with this little rinky dink stuff, this little cheap stuff, nah, I'm straight. So hopefully the Ravens make the right decision. Hopefully they make the right decision. Um, do I think they'll come up with the money to sign Lamar to a new contract? It's there. They can do it. They can do it. Um, it's just up to them to make it happen. Do I think they will? I would lean more towards the side of yes. There's always that little possibility, though, that they may not see things the way he sees things, and he may not see the way they see things, and... Hey, we're going to see. We're going to see. Because we know what they need to do. Or we, we know what they should do. But it's a matter of will they do it? We're going to see. I don't know. And he said, number two, if so, how much? Oh, yeah, we already didn't answer that question. Lamar, it, for him, it should start at the Deshaun Watson thing. It, it should start there. It should. Why not? The, the timing, the, the, the situation, it should start there. Ooh. He said number three And if they do Will they rely on him To become even more of a super See that, that's the scary part right there That's the scary part right there Oh let me finish though He said If they do sign him to a new contract Will they rely on him To become even more of a superman Because they can't afford Top tier talent moving forward Remember Anquan Bowden's departure After Joe's extension Keep up the great work And congrats, congrats on the success of the channel Appreciate it Appreciate that um, See that's, that right, that's right there What I was saying earlier if the Ravens pay Lamar Jackson, this does not excuse them from still being able to provide talent around him. Now, something to think about. Um, excuse me. I wonder, because again, public perception, it, it plays a part. And, and a lot of fans already have it in their mind. Hey, Lamar should take a cheaper deal. He should take less money. Because if he takes the most money that he can get, oh, man, then we're not going to be able to provide anything around him. We're not going to be able to pay anybody else. And that's going to be it. We're only going to be able to pay Lamar Jackson. He take all the salary cap. Man. Uh-uh. No. No. If there's truly a will, then there's always a way to get it done. The cap is cap. There's so many ways to work around it. And I know some owners got more money than others. I, I, I get that. But there are ways to do this thing, man. So when it comes to Lamar Jackson getting paid, and, and he should not take a cheaper deal, just a reminder. And the Ravens, I, I, I would just hope that they wouldn't put it out there to the public or they wouldn't start, because Ravens wouldn't say it themselves. But they could have little reporters like leak little stuff here and there. Oh, well, the Ravens paid Lamar Jackson, and now, and now they're not going to be able to pay anybody else. Now they're going to be limited on what they can do. Now them paying Lamar Jackson will change some things, but it doesn't stop everything like so many people are trying to suggest. Sometimes I feel like my face be so shiny in these videos. Next question came from my boy Nicholas. He says, Super Bowl contenders. And Graven, first I want to start by thanking you for doing this question from Subscriber Series. It's cool to have an actual conversation with a YouTuber that I've been a fan of. Also appreciate how you treat everyone's questions so respectfully, no matter how much your opinions differ. <laughs> You're the goat for a reason. I'm not the goat at all. I'm a donkey. Um, but no, you saying conversation with a YouTuber, look, don't, don't, don't make it sound like it's special. This, it's, it's not. I'm just a regular person like we all are. And this is just us having conversations about football. That's it. That's it. That's it. So you, it's a conversation with another person. It's a conversation with another Ravens fan. And that's it. 
Nothing more, nothing less. But I, I, I do appreciate you, man. Uh, he said, I think most Ravens fans agree. We are one or two moves away from being a definite contender. Well, there's some Ravens fans that say, hey, we are already. We are right now. But anyway, he said, yes, we could contend now with a little luck, but our roster feels incomplete. I should have kept reading before I started running my mouth. Uh, so I've cooked up two moves that I think puts us in the conversation for the Super Bowl. Okay, let's see what he's talking about. I was originally in the camp saying, we don't need a wide receiver. Give the young guys a chance. Oh, we, we leading into my favorite conversation. Let's see what he's talking about. I trust Bateman to be our number one guy. And Duv, Wallace, Proche all deserve a chance for the number two in slot spot. But if we're not even sure who's going to be number two, what happens if Bateman gets hurt? I haven't seen enough to trust these guys to be the number one wide receiver, and we can't run a three tight end set every play. <laughs> ah, you, you mess around and get a Ravens and Greg Roman three tight ends. They, they going to mess around and find a way to have them three tight ends out on the field. Maybe even four. But be, be careful what you say because it just might end up going down. Anyway, he said, I'm going to assume DK Metcalf is off the table. Okay. I think that's everyone's first pick. Well, not everybody. I know a lot of people with the DK Metcalf, but a lot of people are not. But anyway, uh, with the Baker trade going through, I think Robbie Anderson for a second or third is a solid possibility. Uh, yeah, I do too. Uh, he gives us more vertical threat and he's more reliable than some other names like Denzel Mims, Scotty Miller, Kendrick Bourne. Uh, Nikhil Harry, where did he get traded to? Was it the Bears, I think? I think it was the Bears. It was somewhere. Um, if we go to free agent route, I think fans are sleeping on Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, he's hurt, but early season is when the Ravens shine. Lamar can build chemistry with the younger guys. Then come late season playoffs, our offense will gain a whole, a whole new dimension. It, see, I, yeah, it's been a lot of talk about Odell Beckham Jr. I, I, would, I was just talking to one of my guys the other day about this. Um... I, me, I would prefer somebody who can impact right now. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. is, he's a gamble. And I feel like the Ravens are already gambling big time with the wide receivers that they have already. Um, he could certainly help. He's talented. He, he, when he can play, he can play. Um, but when are you going to get him? When is he going to be on the field? Uh, I, I just... I would rather Ravens have somebody now. I understand the Odell Beckham Jr. thing. Me, and I know some people are going to be like, what? Are you crazy? Yeah, I probably am. But me, if the Ravens sign Odell Beckham Jr., I'd be cool with it. But I would still want them to get somebody else right now. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, yes, he's hurt, but early. Oh, I read that already. Uh, he said, second move. So that's one move. So wide receiver. That's one move. And he said Odell Beckham Jr. also mentioned Robbie Anderson. Okay, two solid ones. Second move is edge. On paper, we are a top 10 defense right now. If we get someone across from away until a job is healthy, I think we could be a top five easily. Robert Quinn and the Bears aren't seeing eye to eye right now. And if he plays like he did in 21 or 19, our defense would be nasty without having to rush a job back. I think with his age and skipping mandatory minicamp, we could snag him for mid-round picks. Well, I think this is going to be a dream deferred uh, because they signed Justin Houston back. So... I think that they'll be done at edge. Uh, well, yeah. He said, I've also heard Deion Jones from the Falcons mentioned as a cut candidate who could take the mic role so Queen can play Will, but that's wishful thinking. Oh, yeah. that He he has been a topic of a lot of conversation, Deion Jones. Um, and it's just been like a, a waiting game to see. Now, that would be somewhere where, because you still got Josh Bynes. And it's like, but if you if you could get Deion Jones, that free up Patrick Queen, let him be more loose, let him be more free, give him, give the Ravens even more flexibility. Um, but if the Ravens could get a significant wide receiver, I'd rather that money be allocated to that. But um, Deion Jones, he could make Patrick Queen's job easier, therefore letting him play better and, and more freely and more confidently, and him playing his natural position, since his natural position with LSU was not. Mike Linebacker, like you mentioned. But anyway, um, sorry for the super long question, but what do you think of these moves? I think they're relatively realistic. I'm no cap guru, so that may be where my idea is flawed. But <laughs> love it. He said, I'm no cap guru, so that may be where my idea is flawed. But the cap is cap anyways. Any other moves you make as a GM? Oh, you know me, man. You uh, you already you already canceled my number one move. 
But yeah, those are some solid stuff. Would the Ravens make any of them? Ah, uh, maybe, but probably not. And last question on this episode came from my boy Javo. He said, it's been a while since I did a question. So I'm going to keep you busy with these, LOL. Which receivers make the roster if you had to choose seven? That's a lot. I think, I don't even think the Ravens keeping those seven. I, I, I think for, for the Ravens, I think even six receivers is pushing it for them. Um, ooh, seven. Right, we'll throw everybody on there. So Bateman, do Proche, Wallace. And if we if we go in seven, oof. I say Shamar Bridges, um, maybe Benjamin Victor, because he got sort of a leg up on them UDFAs, and one more, mm, Makai Polk. Um, and then, uh, how many games you give Roman to open his vault before he gets fired? Oh, man. Um... I think if I think it would take a, a lot for Ravens to fire Greg Roman. I, I think in order for Ravens to fire Greg Roman, they um, hopefully this doesn't happen. Uh, but they would have to really be losing, and the offense would just really have to stink. Um, another way could be if they may not be losing, but their offense may not be having all the success in the world, and they just they may be close, but just no cigar. And then the bye week rolls around. Or, or the, yeah, that long stretch from, I think, between the Bucks and the Saints. Because I think it's like an 11-day stretch right there, something like that. But I think around then. Um, if things are not right by then, then I think that's when they can make a move. Because that will give them the most time in season for them to make an adjustment. Um then he said, the last question, what are your thoughts on the new Madden trailer and improvements? I watched it, but I ain't dissect because I'm like, I, I play Madden, but I'm not I'm not one of them people that's like, oh, man, well, this is going to be great for the new Madden and da 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 because I don't really care that much anymore because um, I don't. I, I I just play it for fun. I just play my franchise. Anything new that I notice, oh, yeah, hey, this is new. Oh, cool. Or, hey, that's different. I got to get adjusted to it or whatever. But I don't like look at the trailer and just I just look at the trailer. I might I'll watch it once and then that'll be it. I ain't gonna watch it over and over. I just kind of don't care that much. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the game. I ain't one of them people. Oh man, Madden sucks. I'm not gonna play it this year. It's the same game. They just they just changing the rosters every year. A lot of people that be saying that same thing. They still buy the game every single year too. But I'm gonna get it, play it, do my f franchise, and that's it. So I, I don't I don't really know what's new in there. Uh, yeah, so, but I don't really care that much either. Now, the real last question. So, I thought that previous question was going to be the last one, but I feel like doing one, one more for this episode. Anyway, he said, this next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, Engraven, man, how's it going? I hope all is well. Let's talk Ravens talk, man. Now, for those who don't know, Chuck Locke is one of John Harbaugh's guys, for real. Uh, the only way I see them trading him is if he asks for it. Uh, I think he's too valuable to the Ravens. So, I can see us doing a bit more three safety sets with this new system. So let's drop the talk about Ravens giving up their first round pick uh, to anyone. They get those picks, not give them away for any player. Now, okay, so you, you, you jumped to something different. Uh, it was all in the same paragraph, so I, I thought it was all the same thing, but you, you, you did a little shift right there. So first, the Chuck Clark talk. Um, it's, I don't know, <clears throat> because I, I, if, somebody, if somebody offered a third or higher, I think the Ravens take it right away for Chuck Law. I think they take it immediately. If somebody offered a fourth or higher, I think a fourth, they talk. Um, I don't know if that would move them enough. I, I think it, 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 could, it would definitely have them talking and definitely had them considering. Um, but I think a third or higher for sure, I think they will take it right away. Um, I, would, again, I would rather them keep it just for more flexibility and for depth. But... I know the Ravens, and I know somebody like, hey, Ravens, they throw a bunch of draft picks in their face. Ravens would be like, ah, give me that, give me that, give me that. But anyway, 
Uh, the next part, uh, he said, let's drop the talk about the Ravens giving up their first round pick to anyone. They get those picks, not give away for any player. They don't pay wide receivers, so I don't see them giving up a first rounder for one. They'll just wait until someone is cut and give them a try. I say let's try what we have first. With good coaches and shorter routes that can help guys get open, it's up to them to catch the ball. Sorry for the long comments. Peace and blessings to all. Oh, trust me, that, that, that wasn't long at all. Now... Um, piece by piece, let's drop the talk about Ravens giving up their first round pick to anyone. Um, yeah, that that's something that they don't do. Um, but what has that been getting them? Um, now, a lot of it, the whole wide receiver thing, a lot of it has to do with scheme. It, it certainly does. A lot of it has to do with scheme. No Greg Roman run game, yeah, pass game. It's like, and, and and even before Greg Roman, even with the Ravens, run game, yeah, passing game. Uh, they they were never this team that was this just this prolific passing team. It is not them. It hasn't been them. So it's more a philosophy thing than it is a Greg Roman thing. But it's like the thing is when you put those two together. You put the philosophy together mixed with Greg Roman's offensive scheme, and it's like, boom, not a good look for wide receivers. Now, um, last year, it did their passing game did take a step forward, but this year we'll really see if that passing game took a step forward due to injury. Only due to injury, excuse me, because we got to see what it does this year too, hopefully without. The injuries, hopefully not. Um, but Ravens, uh, you get what you pay for. You mentioned like, yeah, they, they like to wait to see guys get cut. You get what you pay for. Last year, and I, I hate going down this list, but we have to go down this list. Last year, um, they got Sammy Watkins, one year, $6 million deal, $5 million guaranteed. <sighs> if, he if he could ever stay healthy, that would be a good signing. I felt like it was a straight signing, but I kept saying, can't put all your eggs in the Sammy Watkins basket. It can't be him and that's it. So then they drafted Rashad Bateman. and I was like, all right, cool. But then everybody got hurt, messed everything up. Then Lamar got hurt, Rashad Bateman got healthy, and they didn't really get to play together that much. Um, but you get what you pay for. They signed Dez Bryant, who hadn't played in like three, four years. Uh, Willie Sneed, he was solid, but... He, he was solid. Um, Seth Roberts signed him to one year. I think it was maybe like a $5 million. I don't remember how much it was. He was all right. He, yeah. he signed Michael Crabtree, uh, who was a good route runner, uh, but known for drops. He had that attitude. He had that dog. Boy. He got that dog. He got that heart, man. I, I, I like Michael Crabtree, but he did have a little drops. He's a little bit. Um, but... They, they signed him to the really a one year seven million dollar deal. It was technically a three year twenty one million dollar deal, but I think only that first year was guaranteed, so it was always constructed like a one year deal. Um, they signed John Brown to a one year five million dollar deal. Um, so I mean, you you like you see a trend? They at wide receiver they just they don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for it. And I think part of it is, is because of their philosophy. Because they like, hey, like receivers, we 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 got we gotta have I think I feel like the Ravens would be like Ravens would be like the only team. If um I don't know if there's in the NFL, I don't know if there's like a certain like a, a minimum amount of wide receivers you gotta have on your roster. But I feel like with the Ravens, if if they could be like you know what? We don't want no wide receivers on our team. I feel like they would be the one team that would do that. They'd be like, hey, if we ain't going to have no receivers on the team, we ain't going to put no receivers on the team. Just give us tight ends and that's the offensive line and running back, and we'll do our thing. But no, seriously, I, I just, um, they, with their philosophy, I, I think that's why they are so cheap at the wide receiver position. They don't want to pay big money at the wide receiver position because they just don't value the wide receiver position like other teams do. They don't. That's not them. Now, I, I do always hear that about, like, what you were saying. Um, they had Ravens, they're they, they not going to do that. They're not going to go out and get a wide receiver that way in that form, in that fashion, like a trade for a big-time wide receiver. They're not going to do that. Um, I think they should. 
But yeah, you're right. They don't do that. But who's to say that they can't change that? Who, who's to say that the way that they do things is 100% right? Who's to say that the way that they do things, it doesn't need any fine tuning at all? Who's to say that the way that they do things is perfect? It's not. It's not. The way that, no, and, and nobody's perfect. No GM's perfect. No organization, team perfect. I get that. But Ravens got some things, and some, some little things they could fix here and there that I feel could take them to another level, especially offensively. Defensively, you know, they're they, they fine there. That's they, they've been about that defense. But offensively, and again, same conversation, man. The reason this conversation keeps coming up so much, especially with me, is because, especially offensively, is because of what they have on offense, eh? And what they've had on offense since 2018, who they had on offense since 2018, and what they've done and what really what they haven't done in a lot of areas with him, for him, including him. So, yeah, they, they could really step it up there a, a lot, a whole lot. So, um, so we'll see, man. We, we, we'll see. Uh, he said uh, they, they don't pay wide receiver. We talked about that. They'll just wait until someone is cut and give them a try. Yeah, that, that's, that's what they do. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's what they do. Uh, with good coaches and shorter routes, they can help guys get open. I mean, a guy, if a guy can get open, he can get open. A shorter route, medium route, intermediate route, deep route, whatever. If, if a guy can get open, he can get open. Like, just period, or whatever route. Um, but yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. That's what they brought in Team Arnie Keith Williams for. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We're gonna see. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Shout out to Graven.